I had to give all glory and praise and honor to the Most High. And we're gonna get we're gonna be getting into it, man. And um, what we're gonna be talking about today is um, Acts chapter twenty nine. Now, in the book uh, in in the Bible, in the, in the King James Version, the book of Acts it only stops at chapter twenty eight. But when you look at the sixteen eleven um, Seifer Bible, there's a chapter twenty nine. There's an extra chapter on there, and that's what we're going to be getting into today. Now, it's been a lot of s speculation about if, you know, that chapter 29 is legit, if it's actual scripture, if it's actual canon, because a lot of people don't think that it's, um, it's real. But um, but it's in the Sefer, man. It's in the 1611 Sefer, you know, and people, and it's the Sefer. People, a lot of people prefer the Sefer over the KJV. You know, so we're going to be looking at that today, man. We're going to be getting into it, man. In Acts chapter 29, you know, it's actually interesting when you read it, you know. It, you know, it talks about Paul and, you know, his um, his conquests into Spain, into Britain, you know, him preaching the word. You know, he goes into things like, uh, you know, Pontius Pilate, you know, things like that and how he died. You know, it's an interesting chapter. So let's keep going, man. So like I was saying, you know, Acts chapter 29 is in the sea for and when you go on the when you go on the actual website, you know, if it, for those of you that's interested and want to learn more, you know, um, it actually tells you that, you know, there is manuscripts for this Acts chapter, Acts chapter twenty nine. Let's take a look at it real quick. So right here, this is um, uh, Cifer net. This is where you can actually go and purchase uh purchase a sixteen eleven uh Cifer Bible. And right here, you know, on the website, it's saying right here. And I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read this whole thing. This is just for you guys so you can see. It says, yes, chapter 29 was originally found in the Greek, the Greek manuscripts, you know. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's in the 1611 Cephas, you know. So, this is, they're saying it's legit, man. So, let's keep going, man. I'm just going to pull it up. So, we're going to start right here in the book of Second Edges first before we jump into Acts chapter 29. And, um, and I'm starting here because I'm going to connect this to Acts chapter 29 because in... Acts chapter 29, you know, there's a, um, there's a verse, you know, that talks about, you know, the northern kingdom at the Assyrian captivity. And, you know, a lot of you guys know this verse right here in 2nd Ezra 13, 40 through 53 already. And we're just going to read it. And, 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 we're, and we're read it because there's a lot of speculation as to where, you know, that 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 new land was where they went to, you know, the northern kingdom, the, the other ten tribes, you know, Asherah. People say Asherah is in Africa. Some people say it's in America. But when you read, you know, Acts chapter twenty nine, you know, it it, it 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 tells you something, man. So let's let's read this first, and we'll get into it some more. So Second Ezra chapter thirteen forty through fifty three. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Salamanser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt that they might keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow place, places of the river. For the Most High then shewed signs for them and hell still the flood till they were passed over. For, though, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And, that, and the same region is called Asherah. Then dwelt they there until the latter time and now when sh they shall begin to come. So it says that region was called Asherah, man. You know? So like I was saying before, you know, some people say that it's Africa. Some people say that, you know, it's in America. So, you know, when you crack open, you know, the first two verses in Acts chapter 29, it, it, you know, I think verse one and two, you know, it, it kind of gives you some clarity, you know? So let's, let's bring that up right now. So this is Acts 29, uh, 1 through 3. And Paul, full of the blessings of Christ and abounding in the spirit, departed out of Rome, de determined to go into Spain 
for he had a long time proposed to journey thither ward and was minded also to go from hence to Britain. For he had heard in Phoenicia that certain of the children of Israel about the time of the Assyrian captivity had escaped by sea to the isles afar off as spoken be the prophet Ezra's and called by the Romans Britain. So you see, just like we read in, in 2nd Ezra 13 just now, you know, right here in Acts chapter 29 verse 2, he's, you know, it's saying that Paul heard of the, uh, the children of Israel, you know, after Assyrian captivity, they, they went by sea to, uh, to some islands of far off, you know, and it was a region called Asareth, spoken by the prophet Ezra, caused by the Roman Britain, man. So now this word Brit, this word Britain, or British, I should say, um, like Brit means like covenant. The, the word Brit mean, means covenant. And ish means like people. So it, 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 like British means like covenant people. And this was a, a name given to them by the Romans, you know? So just keep that in mind. So let's, let's keep going. Verse 3, And the Lord commanded the gospel to be preached far hence to the Gentiles and to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, man. You know, so dear. So right here, you see, these, you know, were the Israelites of the northern kingdom that after the Syrian captivity, they, they went off to a far other land, you know. Spoken of the prophets of Ezra, he's speaking about that in Acts 29. So this is interesting, man. You know, because it's telling you that the Romans, the Romans call them Britain. You know, you know. So that's that's an indicator right there. You know, so you know, a lot of our history's been, you know, a lot of it's been whitewashed. You know, a lot of things were removed, and you know, like it was saying, you know, Paul went to Spain, he went to Britain, and. A lot of our people, we live, we lived in those in those regions, man. You know, but you, but you know, they were like I said. A lot of our history has been erased. A lot of it has been watered down. It's been whitewashed. You know, because they don't want you to know these things. You know, but when you look at when you look up at the um, the, the the papal bull of fourteen ninety two, or some people call it the dumb diverses of fourteen ninety two. You know, you see that, you know, there was a lot of black people living in Spain around that time that were kicked out, you know, you know, they passed that declaration, you know, after the Granada Wars and, you know, um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the, um, people of color, you know, the black people that was living in Spain, they got kicked out of those regions, you know. So, you know, all those European regions, Britain, you know, things like that, they were kicked out of, the, of those areas, man, you know. So we're gonna keep going, man. You know, and, and well, because you know, Paul. It says that, like I said once again, it says that Paul went to those areas to preach. You know, and those are the and and you see chapter twenty nine. It says the Romans call that, you know, call that call them Britain, call that area Britain. You know, he went to Spain. He went to Britain. You know, and saying that hey, those those is a region where the ten tribes went. Yeah. So right here, what does it say right here? It says the lost tribes of Israel migrated to Europe before and after the Median Persian conquered Assyria. In specific, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh migrated to England. Later, the tribe of Manasseh migrated to America. England means Ephraim land, and it said anglo saxon means sons of Isaac. <laughs> you know, it's it, like it sounds funny, you know. You know, but like I say, you know, Paul went to these regions, man. And we know, and, and, and like you said right here, you know, there's a, the, the, the Manasseh migrated further off to America, you know, and a lot of people say that Asherah was America, you know. This is um this is this is this is interesting, man. Cause remember, like I was saying, a lot of our people were kicked out of these regions, you know, the the, the 1492 papal bull, the dumb diverses, you know. 
So, you know, just do a, some research, you know, right here at the highlighted part that I have circled. It says the first the first national church was in Britain, not Rome. The first appointed Roman Catholic bishop pope was Linus. Linus was a convert from the British church. Mm -hmm. So Linus was a convert from the British church. You need to remember that. You know, and it's saying that the first national church was in Britain, not Rome. Remember that Britain was one of the places that they went, it says, you know, you know, to keep their laws, to keep their commandments. You know, they went off to a further land, you know. So let's keep going. So right here, um, the circle part underneath says the ancient Roman Catholic Church did much damage in trying to rewrite history so that people think that they are the first national church. So you see that? We know that the Catholic Church is corrupt, you know, and, and, and wicked. And that's the church that the, uh, the Hamashiach speaks about in, um, in Revelations, being the mother of all harlots. You know, is this Roman, the Roman Catholic Church, you know, that, 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 that religion, you know. You know, they don't follow the, um, the doctrine, you know, of the scriptures, man. You know, they do things contrary. So... You know that that dumb diverses that 1492 paper bull that 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 came out from the Catholic Church. You know, you know, you know, and that's how a lot of the um you know, you know the um the Negroes the Hebrews got enslaved because of that decree because of that doctrine. You know, you gotta look it up. So, you know, we know that the like I said before, the Roman Catholic Church is corrupt and they they change a lot of things. You know, so people think that they're legit. You know. But, you know, they're saying that, look, they were not the first national church. The first national church was in Britain, not Rome. So let's keep going. So right here, it says Roman Catholicism as a separate denomination started in the 200s AD when the Bishop of Rome began to change doctrine. So you see, they began to change doctrine. As noted in the chapter of the authority of the Bible, the ancient church fathers taught we must obey, we must all obey scriptures, and no one has the right to change the teachings of the Bible. If anyone does, even if he leads a large church like Rome, they must be ignored, man. You know, and a lot of people they 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 flock to that, you know, to the Catholic Church, you know, but they don't, you know, follow scripture, man. And that's the church that the, the like I said once again that the Hamashiach said is the harlot, you know, the mother of all harlots, you know. They persecuted a lot, a lot of the Hebrews, man. You know, um, let's keep going. The main teaching that set Rome apart was the idea that Peter was the first pope or the bishop of Rome. You know, that charge to the right shows the bishops of Rome given by the church father, Ebesus. It lists all the Roman bishops down to his day, AD 325. Roman Catholics show the same list, except they put Peter as the first pope before Linus. The following are quotes from the ancient church fathers showing Peter was never thought of as a bishop of Rome or pope. So remember, so, so, so they, that's, they said like, you know, what sets the Roman Catholic church apart, why people love to flock to it, because they like to, uh, they like to use Peter, which is one of the, um, the, the disciples, and say that he was the first bishop or pope of Rome, you know, which is incorrect. And you see that list to the right right there, it shows you that, look, Linus was the first to, um, you know, was the first one. And remember that this Linus, he was originally part of uh, the church of um, the, first, the first British, but he, was, he, con he converted over to the, you know, to the Roman Catholic Church. You know, but he was originally, you know, of the, um, you know, of the of the first church, like it says before, of Britain. You know, so it was never it was never Peter, but that's something that they love to stand on, and say Peter was the first bishop or or, or pope of Rome. It's incorrect, you know. So let's let's keep reading right here. Uh, it says after the martyrdom of Paul. And Peter, Linus was the first to receive the episcopate of the church at Rome. You know, but remember, remember like I said before, he was originally of the church of Britain. You know, so, all right, let's, let's, let's keep going on right here. It says, um, 
Irenaeus 177. Blessed, the blessed apostles then having founded and built up the church committed into the hands of Linus, the office of the Episcopate. Of this Linus, Paul makes mention in the epistles to Timothy, to him succeeded Anclitus, and after him in the third place from the apostles, Clement was allotted um, bishopric. So, you know, they they, they, they they had it all, they had it all figured out, man. Like, who was supposed to go next? You know, but Peter was never a part of the Catholic Church, man. You know. So, B.C.S. A.D. 325, after Vespian had reigned 10 years, Titus, his son, succeeded him. In the second year of his reign, Linus, who had been bishop of the Church of Rome for 12 years, delivered his office to Ancretus, man. So that was the next person, you know, that was supposed to come in line, you know, that, that Paul said, you know, because you remember that, like, like after, um, you know, after the Hamashiach died, his disciples also had people that they taught, you know, and, you know, Paul had, you know, Paul, these were his, you know, his students, or some of his students, I should say, you know, so he, he had them in order of, like, who was supposed to go next, and, you know, so... You know, and once again, remember that Linus originally came from the Church of Britain. <sighs> you know, and he um, he gave that office over to Anclitus. You know, after twelve years, um, let's go. To, let's jump down to the last one, the title of Pope. In the first two centuries, the head of a church was called bishop. In the second century, the term perp began to be used and refer to the leader of a patriarch. You know. So they never used to call anybody pope. You know, it was all it was all, it was it was bishop. You know, for the first two centuries, so, and they started using that term pope after. Interesting. Hmm. So you see that man? You see how the Catholic Church they twisted that doctrine and say you know just to, to use Peter. You know, which was one of the disciples of the Hamasiak <laughs> as the head of the um of that Roman Catholic Church, man. You know, and I don't think that uh, I don't think he would allow that, man. <laughs> you know. So right here it says, um, the ancient Roman Catholic Church was a good church when it was an underground persecuted church before before the Roman Empire converted to Christianity. Yeah. After the Roman Empire converted to Christianity, the ancient Roman Catholic Church turned sour and rewrote history against the national Celtic British Church so that the church is prominent. Eventually, it plunged into the Dark Age. I am suspicious that Acts 29 and possibly other passages were removed from the Bible while the ancient Roman Catholic Church rewrote history. Acts 29 supports the fact that Britain was um, evangelize, evangelize. Sorry, shortly after Yeshua Hamashiach was crucified, man. You know, you know, because like I said, Paul says that twenty nine. Once again, Paul went to those places. He went to Spain. He went to Britain. You know, <laughs> and you know, Britain was that first church, but you know, the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they, they rose up. They gained power. You know, that, that, that beast, that dragon, you know, and they persecuted the saints, you know, and you know, that all ties into, once again, the 1492, 1492 papal bull, you know, so right here. Seasons were changed, like the, like the, like the scripture says they're going to, going to, they were going to change times and laws. You know, the pagans were celebrating Easter and Saturnalia. The early Christians were celebrating Passover, Yom Kippur, and other Jewish holidays. After the Roman Empire converted to Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church was modified. The Roman Catholic Church modified the pagan events by changing Saturnalia to Christmas and claimed Yeshua HaMashiach was born on Christmas and rose from the dead on Easter. Mm. It is clear that Yeshua HaMashiach was not born in, on Christmas. We know that. Yeshua was born 
the same evening when shepherds were tending to their flocks. It's too cold during December in Haley Bethlehem to tend sheep at night. <laughs> so we all, knew, we all knew that it was a lie, man. Well, we, when we started waking up, you know, they tell, they, they, I mean, they told us these things for years and they ran with these things, you know, for years. You know, because, you know, that church is of the devil, man. The Catholic church is of the devil, you know. You know. You know. So, um, let's just read this one more thing. Early history of the Celtic church. The Celtic, Chris, Celtic Christianity is the term given to the Christian church of the Celtic peoples occupying the British Isles, spanning what we now know as England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Many scholars believe that the Celtic Christianity in British Isles has its roots in Asia Minor and not in Roman Christianity. Celtic Christianity around 480 was roughly divided into three branches, Gallic, Gallic French, Celtic Christianity, Galatian Celtic Christianity, and British Celtic Christianity. According to historians, British Celtic Christianity was heavily influenced by Galatian Celtic Christianity, which was a product of the missionary labels of the Apostle Paul. Yeah, see that? So Paul, man, you know, running to and fro in those lands. And you know that, you know, he also, remember he wrote also with the book of Galatians, man. You know, so it said the British Celtic Christianity was heavily influenced, you know, by Galatian Celtic Christianity, which was a product of the missionary labels of the Apostle Paul, man. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, uh, it's a lot to swallow, but, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of our people were in, the, like I said before, we're in these lands, we're in these regions, you know. But like I said, a lot of our history has been whitewashed, it's been erased, so we don't know these things, you know. So the Mosai has to, you know, give us understanding, he has to bring these things back to remembrance to us. You know, once we know who that book is talking about, you know, a lot of things are going to start to make sense. Because when you think of those areas, you don't think of people like, you know, of yourself, you know, you, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't think there were people of color in those, in those lands, you know, even when you look in, um, you know, you, you go to Russia and things like that, you know, you see they have the um, pictures of, you know, Black Mary up on the wall and things like that, you know, you know, a lot of the nobles in Europe, you know, they, they you know, they, they, they were, you know, there was people of color here, man. But like I said, man, 1492, a lot of us, Spain, dumb diverse, as people put, we got kicked out of those areas, you know. Then then came a lot of captivity next, a lot of persecution, a lot of slavery, you know. So with that being said, hopefully this was edifying, man. You know, all praises to the most high.